is most of the 25 offices. Hi, this is Eric Slack, Senior Analyst with Stores Switzerland, and thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to talk about object storage and scalability with Russ Kennedy, Vice President of Product Strategy for CleverSafe. Russ, thanks for joining us. Hi, Eric. Thank you. Um, you know, scalability has always been a fundamental characteristic in storage systems. With the advent of social media and big data and the cloud, um, the ability to expand has really become a, def a defining characteristic. Sure. Um, we were just talking recently with, uh, with Shutterfly, the, the photo website, um, and th they were mentioning that they've got upwards to 70 petabytes of data. That's I, correct. Yeah, I was kind of on the phone. That's one of your clients, yeah, exactly. actually. And they're growing rapidly. Yeah. I, you know, can you talk a little bit about object storage and, and how the technology can scale like, like that to accommodate that sort of data? Sure. Well, let me first talk about traditional storage systems okay. and why they're somewhat limiting. So Good. traditional storage systems have a hierarchy associated with them. Mm -hmm. The location of information is directed by how the structure is set up. Okay. And you can store a certain amount of information in that kind of system, but you're limited. Object storage systems have a flatter namespace. Okay. Each object in an object storage system is unique. It's identified by what's known as an object ID, and the object ID directs how to find the object, how mm -hmm. to locate the object within the system. So that's, that's, that's how it's, it's scalable. But not all object storage systems are the same. Okay. And there's some limitations with certain approaches to object storage system. One is, if you replicate information to protect it, uh -huh. then there's a practical limit because you have to buy more storage in order to save Because you're save duplicating your data, data correct. to put on... on That's okay. correct. Other object storage systems have a centralized metadata manager, mm -hmm. which, again, once you get over a you know, certain size or number of objects in that metadata manager, then your performance is going to degrade or your ability to scale the system is going to be limited. So they've got an efficiency issue with handling the metadata. Correct. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So, so how, how do you guys do it? What's the... So, so CleverSafe is different. We actually designed our architecture just like the Internet is designed today. Hmm. Everything is peer-to-peer. -peer. There's no centralized anything in our, in our structure, and okay. it allows you to scale both capacity and performance independently. Let me describe that okay. a little bit, Eric. Please. So at the storage layer, what we have is storage nodes and the storage nodes exist in the cloud that can be in any location, mm -hmm. you can actually add any number of storage nodes to the system. And these they are physical storage nodes? These, these are physical storage nodes, okay. correct. They all operate independently. They know about the namespace that they're responsible for, and okay. they also know about the neighbors that are part of the entire storage system. Just like DNS works today, mm -hmm. if they don't have a particular responsibility for the namespace, they know to go in this direction to, to help find it or go in this direction to help find it. So it's a very peer-to-peer -peer oriented architecture okay. from a storage perspective. Then if you look at the access layer, the accessors that we, that we deliver as part of our access layer mm -hmm. are all independent stateless devices. All they do is they take information in from the application, they, they slice that information up, they transform that information, and they spread it out over the network of of storage nodes, so they write slices of data out over across the network, okay. all independently. Now what's interesting about the architecture and the way you identify where objects go, uh -huh. all of that is mapped by the contents of the object ID. So when an object is stored in a CleverSafe system, the object ID can tell you exactly where that object is in the namespace and where all the slices associated with that object are in the namespace. So what that means is we don't have to have a centralized metadata manager and at all. And the object all. ID then lives down here with the object. Is yeah, actually, right? the object ID lives either with the application, okay. so the application keeps track of it in a database, or if you want to store metadata in a CleverSafe storage mm -hmm. system as well, you store it just like you store objects. Metadata comes in, or metadata is generated. Say, let's say the name of the object you want to store is metadata. That's also sliced and dispersed across the network, so pieces of the metadata objects also get sliced and dispersed, oh. and they have an object ID associated with them as well. So when you go to look up a file, you have the name, it translates into right. an object ID, and then that right. object ID allows you to find where the object exists in the system. Okay, and so then, maybe I missed this, how does that uh, Facilitate scalability. So, so there's no centralized anything. So you can continue to add okay. objects. You can get to trillions or quadrillions okay. of objects. There's no centralized metadata manager associated with the system at all. And you can just continue to scale it out however, however big your system needs to get. Same thing with the storage. You can mm -hmm. just continue to add storage nodes. And as you add storage nodes, your capacity grows. And each storage node is going to operate independently. It's going to re be responsible for a part of the namespace and know about its neighbors. So it, it can 
it can you know participate, store slices, return slices back to the uh, to the application or back through the access layer to the application, if you will. Oh, you mentioned that there was there was some similarity to the architecture of the internet, and right. I, I, I get the sort of scaling piece, but. Yep. Is there some decisions then that that an object would be able to make, or, or, or one of these uh, one of these um, uh, nodes would be able to make, um, based on if you're a asking for something it doesn't have? Is that right. is that part of the? Well, again, the, the the map of where the information is is all done in the object ID, which is interpreted here at the access layer. So mm -hmm. it already knows where to go. Where, what these guys get involved with in terms of decision making is, let's say, one drive in a particular node fails. Mm -hmm. And the contents of that drive need to be rebuilt from the contents of the other nodes that exist in the system. So it goes out and says, okay, I have other slices associated with this chunk of data right. on other nodes, and I need to pull those slices in to rebuild the missing pieces from the failed drive that's now replaced. So they get involved in a lot of the rebuild activity mm -hmm. and the data protection activity, but the map of the location of the object is all managed by the contents of the object ID, okay. which happens at this layer. So, so you're saying traditional systems then, the, the, the bottleneck of metadata is the thing that, Absolutely. that makes it so that they... It makes it so it can't scale limitlessly. Now we actually built a reference architecture on this and mm -hmm. defined a storage system that could actually scale to 10 exabytes of usable capacity. If you think about it, that's in today's 10, world... That's 10,000 petabytes? Is that's that... 10,000 petabytes, <laughs> and it's actually, if you think about it in, in, in hard figures, uh -huh. it's actually 4.7 million 3 terabyte disk drives. So you can, oh. you can imagine how that works. But the way we designed it is really quite unique. So you can take a number of these storage nodes. Let's say mm -hmm. you can take a few of them here. You can put them in a, what's called a portable data center. Mm -hmm. Put them in a, in a, a physical enclosure, and that portable data center actually can be on wheels. And it can be moved to a different location. It can be you know, taken mm -hmm. offline, brought back online in a new location. So you can actually scale the system out by moving things around to other locations and taking advantage of our dispersal mechanism, making sure that you have a threshold number of slices or right. pieces of information in the system at all time to in, in, ensure that the data is readable and available. That's, the other thing that's yeah, interesting yeah, about that's, object storage systems versus other systems uh -huh. is the, the protocol to write data into an object storage mm -hmm. system is very simple. It's a, it's a REST protocol, right. which stands for represent, representational state transfer. Mm -hmm. I messed that word up because I knew I would. <laughs> very simple. Put, put an object, get an object, list the objects that are in my storage right. container, delete an object. So it's very simple for an application to actually now start talking to an object storage system if mm -hmm. they use this, this REST protocol. And that's what our access layer does. It actually presents that image or that interface, if you will, mm -hmm. to the application. With an API then? With an API, true? exactly. Okay. One other thing yeah. that we do uh, uniquely, we also allow you to embed that software mm -hmm. via a software developer kit into your application server so that you can talk directly to the storage if you want to. You don't have to go to an access, through an access layer. So that even simplifies huh. the architecture any, even more. And some of our customers are doing that as well. Wow. Amazing stuff. I, uh, so so th this is how folks like Shutterfly can do This is how they're getting to 70, petabytes. going to 100, going to 200. And, and they still have to be able to maintain the, the kind of performance that, that that website visitors Absolutely. Uh, require, Absolutely. and they, they don't care if you've got 70 petabytes or 70 gigabytes. Okay, yeah. great stuff. Well, thanks for the information on that, Russ. Um, um, thanks for joining us today. This is Eric Slack from Storage Switzerland. Thanks for tuning in.